Okay, uh, let's begin. So, welcome to the uh, CGI 3D Club. And, well, first week of school in 2020, and it's the, our first session. So, today we're going to learn about the very basics. So, anyone, does anyone here have any prior Blender experience? Yeah, no okay. Too. Oh. Okay, so suppose so uh, except for those who did not bring a laptop here, Louise. Uh, Shut up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Also remember that we are recording all of this, so mind what you say for future I'm audiences. Not, I'm, not allowed, I'm, I'm not allowed to be full of public. Okay. So <laughs> so do you all have the Blender window open, except for you? No. Hi. Oh, okay, don't worry. Can you delete what you said? No, that's fine. No, you can do it. That's okay. Why are you even recording? Just redo it. Two months later, you get sent to the JC. I don't know. No, it's just no video, just voice. Primarily my voice, though. Wow, we're not important enough for you? Nice, it's recorded. Okay, I'll start because you have some experience. Well, yes, yes no, okay. No, it just like did tutorials you, for three hours. That's experience. That's so good. Okay. So this is the Blender window, and well, if you put if you uh, just click on the outside of this little box here, you will be visited with this cube. Now this we call the default cube. We usually dissolve it the moment we see it, but then today we'll be playing around with it. So first, let's talk. Talk about how to navigate through the 3D space. Now, 3D in concept is a grid of points, uh, lines, and faces in a X and Y and Z space. Now, to move around with it, if you have a mouse, you should be able to move around with the middle mouse button. If you press it down and then drag around the screen, you should be able to move around with it pretty easily. In the case you did not bring a mouse, you can always move, use this thing on the right to uh, drag that circle and then move around as well. So if that's done, if you just scroll the mouse in and out, you'll see that you can scroll in and scroll out of where you're looking at. Are we good? Okay, Thank you. so uh, yeah, so you ha you'll see your shift and control keys on the left, and if you hold either shift or control while moving, you're uh, holding and moving your middle mouse button, you'll see that you'll be able to move your view sideways, or control is just zoom in and out, but then you can just use the mouse wheel to do that. All right, so if we, that that was easy. Now, we see this cube here and we want to be able to move around with it and say, uh, play around with it as well. So on the left here are the transformation tools. So these tools will, be, will allow you to uh, move around, rotate, and give different scales to any object you're going to play with. Now, for example, if you want to move this cube around, we can use this uh, move tool over here. And if you click it, you'll see that there are three arrows, each for each x, y, and z axis. Now, if you just drag it with uh, your mouse, then you'll see you'll be able to change its location. And same thing where Okay, so you see this move tool here? If you click that, you will be uh, selecting the uh, moving tool. And once you do that, you'll see these arrows that come out on the cube, which you can move around along these arrows. Or you can uh, click this white circle in the middle to drag it whatever you want. So the squares will allow you to uh, move the objects to uh, planar so while you're moving around with it it's going to be locked in this one specific x and y plane so 
if I look at it from the side, if I use this little plane here, you'll see that it's going just like say there like there's like a wall that doesn't let the object go through, but just slide among that one wall, if you get what that means. So if that's done, if you come back again to the uh, left side, you'll see this rotate tool. Now similarly to the uh, the uh, moving tool, the rotation tool lets you rotate your object in whatever degree you want. And also a shortcut to this uh, tool is R on your keyboard, which if you press R, you can move around to uh, whatever, whatever angle you like. And on the left again, there's a scale tool, which at this point will be a self-explanatory, where you can scale your object in whatever uh, direction you want. It's, it's not a cube. Okay? Anyway. Yeah, so we, we can move around and uh, do all the scaling and that's all, but then if you might want to reset it to its original value, because right now it's at this very uh, crazy state where it's not even like a cube, it's at a very random angle at a random position. But to uh, bring that back to where it was, so, okay, so I, actually I'll, I'll revisit to uh, sh some shortcuts. So to move, you'll see G on your keyboard. So say that you're going to grab your object for G for grab. And if you grab, press G once and then move around your screen, you'll be able to grab the object. Same thing as I told you before, if you press R, you'll be able to rotate, R for rotate, and S for scale. And unlike the individual axes where you scale, if you press S, it'll scale. The entire thing will scale proportionally, which means if you scale a cube, it will still be a cube if it's bigger. Now, to reset all these uh, rotation and uh, location values, you do the pre same uh, shortcuts, but then this time you press Alt with it. So if you press Alt and R, you'll notice that it goes back to its original rotation value. My computer doesn't have a oh. Yeah. Is it not? It has alt. Next to your command? Or does it say like a option? Shift tends to work for Mac as well. Yeah. Oh, option. Yeah, option. So try the option key and then press alt G, alt R, and R, alt S. So then you'll notice the cube come back, comes back to its original location. Okay, so Mo asked if we can reset our camera position. So there's not really a really a way to do it unless uh, we're going to learn about it later. If you have a, a number pad on the left, I'm sorry, on the right side of a keyboard, you're in luck. If not, it's okay. But then, yeah. So there's no actual reset to your view. But then you you'll see notice that there's this weird thing on the middle of the scene which is not the cube but then it's this weird triangular thing so, so that is the camera so we're going to learn about this later so you'll be able to see what the camera sees and that will be able to re be reset but then that's going to we're going to learn about it later so don't worry about that now yeah, you, you can move around the cube and that's all but then you might want to uh, change the actual shape of the cube so that of course, we could have done like do this and that, but then it's still this rectangular form which we want to change more. So how do you do that? Uh, yeah, sorry. I can't that. <laughs> yeah, so to change the shape of your object you have, you need to go to what's called edit mode. Right now, the object is in object mode, which is a, a general way to uh, play around with an object in its natural state, locked, but then on the top side, you'll see that there's this tab called object mode. If you click that, you'll be invited with a bunch of different modes, but here, if you press edit mode, is that S?
If you're all in edit mode, you'll see that the cube looks a bit different now. So, you'll be invited with this orange uh, cube looking thing with like these individual points, lines, and faces. So, every 3D model. Question. Yes? Should the cube be orange? Or like this orange top there? We'll get to that later. So, every 3D object you'll see, like even like in the uh, trailer that I showed in school meeting are made out of three things points edges and faces now a point is just a point is just one dot in a 3d space and an edge is what connects these two dots together and a face is what connects these edges together and with uh, obviously eight points and uh, uh, 12 edges and six faces we are going to get a, get a cube now modeling and thus changing the shape of a 3d object means changing the location of these individual points faces and edges now conveniently blender gives us three uh, selection options for all the uh, points edges and the faces and every time you uh, select each one you'll see that what you can select in this window will also change. So for example, if I have the face selected, you'll see that I can select these faces instead of everything else. Same for the edges where I can only select the edges and points where I can only select the points or vertices. Now, it's the same thing as object mode where you moved around these different points and edges. And say for example, if I selected this edge over here, I can use the same move tool on the left where arrows are going to appear, but instead of this time where the entire cube moves, you'll see that the only this edge that we selected will be moving. So if you play around with that, you can select multiple at the same time. Also to select multiple, you need to hold shift while, while you select that edge. So press 1. Uh, hold shift and then press the other one and then you'll be able to drag that as well to your liking Now same thing goes for rotation and scale But remember that in edit mode, you can't really reset these uh, rotation and translation values because these individual spaces don't really have a home to get in. So uh, because they start off somewhere that's not 0, 0, 0, they're not going to be, there's nowhere where these points are supposed to be. So once you've changed it, changed it if you want to go back, you just need to press Control Z or in Max, I think it's Command Z. Command Z yeah. yeah, but then you can't reset these. So yeah, keep that in mind. So actually, our plan, because it's like the first day and I'm really tired and jet lag right now, the entire plan for today was up to here, but then. Uh, So, is everyone clear so far? No. Okay. No. Shh. <laughs> you should have brought your laptop. Okay. Okay, so, since it's only been 20 minutes out of an entire hour, today we're not going to spend the entire hour because we're all tired. But then, but since it's been only like 20 minutes, we're... Yes, so to delete anything, 
you need to press X. It's not backspace or delete. You need to press X. And same for the uh, cube. If it's like, like say, a face, and if you press X, you'll be invited with a bunch of options. Now, in object mode, if you want to delete something and you press X, you'll just be invited with this one delete thing. If you just press delete, the cube is gone. Congratulations. But then, in edit mode, there are, are a lot of different options when it comes to uh, what you want to delete. And also keep in mind that it, whenever you edit an object, even though there will be three modes for the vertice, the edge, and the face, you can always select multiple at the same time. And this also goes by if you press shift while clicking these options, you'll be able to uh, select all three at the same time. So as you can see, you can select both the vertice, the face, and the edge. Now, okay, so let's do that next. So let's go back to object mode. Do you know how? All right. If we're in, if we're in object mode, let's delete this cube, as I told you how. So, so delete again is X. And you delete it. Now. Obviously, uh, Blender supports much more different forms of geometry. So to add a new object, you'll also need to come up over here. And you'll find this tab called uh, Add. Now if you press Add, you'll see a bunch of different options. But then we're going to use this, select this thing called Mesh. Now, including the cube you saw and it, many other face, shapes and uh, models that you're going to see in the future, we all call those uh, meshes. Now, from here, you can select whatever you want. For example, I can select this cone here, and you'll notice that the cone appears in the uh, screen. Also, uh, you'll notice also notice that uh, the cone appeared in the middle. But has anyone here had their object that did not appear in the center? Okay, also uh, to locate the center, you'll see that these two uh, axis lines, the red and green lines, if they're in the middle, that means it's in the center. Okay, so since you have no idea what's going on with that, so there's this thing called the create 3D cursor. Now, you know what, a, you'll probably know what a cursor is, like the very, like the mouse thing you see on your uh, screen, whatever you do, like your browser, the internet, or anything like that, we call that a cursor. Now we have a, th a similar thing in 3D where you see this weird wet red and a white thing. So that's what we call the 3D cursor. Now every time you add a click somewhere, you'll notice that uh, the uh, 3D cursor will move to wherever that place is. Are we all following so far? No, you're not helping. So that. I have a question. Yep. How come the cone isn't like perfectly round? Why does it have like sharp edges? Sorry. Why does the cone have sharp edges and not perfectly round? I'll explain that. So, but before that, that three D cursor was where other objects will appear. So let's say we add two objects for now. If we uh go back to add and mesh, and let's say we are going to add like a sphere you will see that we have two objects now, and this sphere appeared where this 3D cursor was. Now, Luis asked me why these are like not perfect uh, cones and spheres. Like, why do you see like these square things? So that's what a mesh really is. So, as I told you before, every mesh is made out of points, lines, and faces, which means even though like there will be things that seem very round, even those things are all made of these individual faces. And if it looks smooth, it's just that these little pointers are just so small that you can't really see them. Like real yes, basically. But then in a more mathematical sense. Like there, later there are going to be tricks to make it, to trick that it looks smooth like that. 
but then that we're going to learn yeah, later. In old games, everything looks really blocky and chunky, and newer games look really smooth. So they just have a lot more points. So like games like, like, like older games, yeah, yeah old exactly. Games. So because yeah. old computers didn't have enough processing power, they needed to use uh, less and less of these polygons, we call them polygons, in order to run these games. Now, throughout this course, or this club, you'll notice that if we add more and more objects, your computer will get more laggy and laggy, and it's the exact same issue, where the more vertices you have, the more polygons you have, the more complex the scene will be, and the more your computer will have to calculate. So yeah. And same thing, let's, for example, let's say, uh, Actually, let's all summon a sphere for now. So again, to summon a sphere, you go back to add, mesh, and then you add a sphere. It doesn't matter which sphere it is, like a UV sphere, ICO sphere, or a quad sphere, it doesn't matter. So the difference it is in the way how these uh, meshes are constructed, for example, like the quad sphere, you'll see like how like this is just like a square, this has like weird angles. Again, I'll explain that later and how to make those. So if you all have a sphere, let's select a sphere, and let's go to edit mode. And, uh, okay, to go to edit mode again, on the top left, yes. So this time you'll notice that in the sphere, you can select it first. Okay. In this field, you notice there are like way, way more polygons, vertices, and faces. And individually, you can control these, but then you'll notice it looks pretty weird once you do, and it's really irregular. Now, there is a way sorry, to uh, have multiple faces move together. So, so far, we've only been moving one edges at a time, or one face at a time, but then... This is just an example of the various tools we will be using later on to be modeling, but then it's just like introduction today. So, if you press O on your keyboard or this top thing on the top, you'll notice that this thing will be turning blue or it will be turned on, which is all. This is called proportional editing, which allows you to move multiple faces, vertices, or edges at the same time. So if you have this on and then try to grab and drag an object, you'll notice that a greater portion of the uh, sphere will be uh, translated. Are we sp also, uh, we don't hold, uh, we just press it once to turn it on or off. So once you turn it on and then drag a face, you'll be able to have results like that. And it's rather satisfying. So, so the point of this is that, so yeah, I think I'm going to end it here, so I'll, to do like a little recap, uh, 3D space, ha well, a mesh is made out of three things, vertices, edges, and faces, and there are mo many different ways to uh, control how these uh, faces are interact with each other, and this is one of the tools that lets you uh, move many faces at the same time, so that you don't need to move one at one at a time and yeah that's basically it for today so does anyone have questions i guess not oh yeah mo good question that's going to be for next time but then you can always Google it if you're by yourself if you have to drive to learn it yourself. But then yeah, that's for next time. I can't drive yet. Okay, shut just shut up. <laughs> Alright. That's it for today.